In this lesson, we're going to learn about reorganizing our code into functions. I'm mostly going to be working with the code file, so I'm going to get rid of this assistant editor. I can either click this button or you can use the shortcut command enter to make it single screen. And then I'm going to hit viewcontroller.swift to see my code file. Now you can see that we've got a lot of functionality that's inside this roll button pressed IB action. And just to recap, we have two lines that creates two separate random numbers. And then we print one of the random numbers. And then we use those random numbers to change the image view of the dice faces. So for a dice shaker app, this is very common functionality, changing the dice face. So what if I needed that to happen elsewhere? For example, if upon opening up the app, I wanted two random dice faces instead of just having snake eyes all the time. Um, well, then I would have to put it within the view did load. And this is a function that only gets triggered at the time point when the view or when the screen loads up. So this is the perfect place to put in the code that's required to generate a new set of dice faces. Now I can either essentially copy all of this and paste it in here. And if I run it, you'll see how it works. So immediately upon the app loading up, we already see a random set of dice faces. And when I press the roll button, it'll continue to give me new random dice faces. That's well and good. But remember previously we said when you copy and paste code, you tend to make errors. And also look at how cluttered our code file has become with loads of repeated elements. One of the most fundamental principles of good programming is called dry. Don't repeat yourself. So whenever you see repeated code, such as these blocks, you should always try to package them into a function that you can call upon when needed. So the less code there is, the less errors there'll be. Let's try and see if we can package this functionality. This closing brace, the, remember the ones facing left, is closing this opening brace. And together, everything in between make up the roll button pressed IB action. Now, I don't want to put my function inside this function. That won't work. So instead, I'm going to hit enter and make my new function beneath it. So here, in order to create a new function, I use the func keyword in Swift. And then I'm going to give it a name that describes explicitly what this function achieves. In this case, I'm going to call it update dice images. Now, of course, you can name your variables and functions however you like, but just remember to give it a name that is explicit. And when another programmer comes along and looks at your code, they can easily understand what your functions achieve. So I think this makes sense. Update dice images because this block of code essentially generates random numbers and then updates the image views. So then I'm going to add two parentheses. So nothing goes inside these parentheses. In the introduction to Swift programming lectures, we're going to learn a lot more about functions and their variations. And you're going to understand what these parentheses are for. But for now, we're going to leave them empty. Now I'm going to open a curly brace. And this is the moment when one of the most common programming errors gets generated. So now that I've opened this curly brace, if I leave it as it is, and I click away, clo this closing brace which used to close the entire class now becomes the closing brace for this update dice images function. And the class no longer has a closing bracket, which is why there's this error that says expect a declaration, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But it's actually telling you that your class was opened, but was never closed. So to avoid this error, whenever you find yourself typing the open brace, always hit enter straight away. That way Xcode automatically generates the closing brace for you and all is well and good with your code. So just remember that little tip to avoid these curly brace associated errors. Okay, so let's check. Great, so this closing brace closes this opening brace and everything in between is gonna be the functionality of our update dice images. So I'm going to take all of this code um, and then I'm going to cut with command X 
and paste into here. Now, of course, you can type it all out for practice as well, but just to show you, it's exactly the same as what used to be in Rollbot and Pressed. And I'm going to get rid of this print statement because it was more for us to find out what random dice index was um, rather than having any sort of useful functionality. And I'm going to give my code a bit of space so I can see easily at a glance what it does. OK, so now that we have this function called update dice images, we can now use it everywhere where we need this functionality. So we can get rid of this code inside view did load. And instead, we can make a call to the function update dice images. As soon as I start writing update, Xcode will give me a suggestion. Then just hit enter or tab for it to insert it in there. Always try to save yourself work by getting Xcode to insert these uh, function names or variable names. On one hand, you save yourself a bit of time typing. Secondly, you save yourself spelling errors. And because we're dealing with computers, the uppercase and lowercase matters a huge deal. If you typed update dice images with a lowercase d, the computer won't know what the hell it is that you're talking about because it only knows update dice images with a capital D and a capital I. So let's change that back to that. And you can see that the code highlighting goes from black to when it recognizes to this kind of indigo color. So whenever you have bits of code that's not got the proper code highlighting, always be wary that there might be a problem with it. So currently when the view loads, we're going to update new set of dice faces. And also when we press the roll button, we want to update a new set of dice images. Now I'm also going to call the method over here. Now, at the moment, I'm using the words methods and functions pretty much interchangeably. They are different, but the difference is mostly academic. For all intents and purposes, it's okay for you to assume that they're the same thing for now. In a later module, when we start talking about objects and classes and the fundamentals of object-orientated programming, we'll then tease out the difference between methods and functions, objects, classes, etc. So for now, all we have is a call to the method update dice images within view did load and another call to the method um, within roll button pressed. So let's run this app again. And if we did everything right, the app should look identical to the last time we ran it. OK, so initially on loading up, I get a random set of dice faces. And also when I press the roll button, I get random dice faces. So the functionality of our app hasn't changed at all, and that's because we haven't added any new functionality. All we did was tidy up our code and group together all of that functionality within update dice images. And then we called it in view did load and we called it in roll button press. Now, remember, when we create variables, we use the var keyword. And when we create functions, we use the func keyword. But when we subsequently decide to change the value that's held inside a variable, we don't use the keyword anymore, right? So we just simply say random dice index um, and then set it equal to a new value. Um, and similarly with functions or methods, when you call it, you don't have the func keyword. Notice the difference between when I call to use the method and when I create it using that func keyword. So what exactly is so great about functions anyways? Why do we bother creating them and using them instead of just typing out and putting the code where we need? Functions are a great way to group together similar commands. Now, for example, if you wanted me to get you some milk and I was a robot, you would have to tell me line by line how to execute this action, right? I would first probably have to take money, open the door, close the door, walk forwards, turn right, walk some more, turn left, go inside the shop, etc, etc, etc. You know, this will be hundreds of lines of commands so that I can achieve just this simple task of getting milk. Now, would you want to write out all of those commands? every single day if you needed milk? No, that's why we package all of these commands into one function called get milk, and we stuff all of those individual commands inside. So whenever we call the function get milk, the robot will automatically know to execute everything that's inside. So coming back to our dicey project, that's exactly what we did. We had these four lines of code, which performs a very simple functionality of updating the dice image faces. And then we've essentially just called this method every time we needed it. 
In the next episode, we're going to be talking about how to engage the motion sensors in the iPhone and how we can get the dice to roll and change their dice faces upon the user shaking the iPhone. So all of that's yet to come and I'll see you in the next episode.